Hi guys, I've got another bit review. Um, it's a bit weird really because I haven't, this is like in a series and I haven't reviewed the other books because that was when I was on my break from reviewing, or from YouTube entirely, um, but I thought I'd do it anyway because I finished it today. And the book is Stefan's Diaries the Ripper, book four in the Stefan's, it's Vampire Diaries, obviously, but it's Stefan's Diaries, book four, um, in the series, it's the Ripper. Um, this is actually, it's quite weird because the show is based on the books, which, but the show is nothing like the books, and these books are not written by the author, and they're based on the show, they're written by a ghost writer, um, who has now stolen O.J. Smith's books, for book, actual books as well, but we're not going into that. Um, they are, these books are good. Um, I was a little bit dubious, to be honest. They're quite good, but they are predictable. Um, I mean, books 8, 9, and, well, not 10, because it's not out yet, but books 8 and 9, well, book 8 was good, of, of, of Normal Vampire Diaries, was half written by L.J. Smith, uh, was half written by a ghostwriter, and LJ Smith book 8 was, and book 9 was written by a complete ghostwriter, and it was awful, I think. It was really predictable. I predicted the virtually the entire plot apart from the end, and these are predictable too. I do think, that from the style of writing and everything, that it's the same ghostwriter. Um, and although it's predictable, it's fairly good. It's quite interesting to know about where Stefan went and Damon went after they'd been turned. The first book... I liked because of all the Stefan. I really like Stefan and Catherine. But I liked that because we got to see so much more about how she was and everything. Obviously we got shown in the show how all the events, so that wasn't really predictable because we knew what was going to happen anyway. Um, books two, I can't really remember what happened in the other books very well, but I vaguely remember and they were pretty predictable too. My main issue with these books is the first person which Okay, a lot of books are. Um, I prefer third person myself. I will always choose to write in third if it fits as well, if I'm writing. Um, apart from a few things, it just depends. You know, some stories need to be written in first person, some need to be written in third. Um, and I don't mind first person, but I prefer, I prefer third. And because it's from Stefan's point of view. And I really... I don't mind Stefan. I like him in the main books. In this show, I'm not really that keen on him. Um, personally, I think... I mean, I, I love Damon, but that doesn't mean I couldn't like Stefan as well. I mean, I'd like to see him happy, but he does annoy me. He's very hypocritical, sort of, because obviously you get to see his thoughts where it's third person. He is so hypocritical about all the things he says now, and especially what he's done in the show. Um, and he is really a martyr and he thinks everything he does is completely right and he's always moaning about all the things he's done in the past and oh this happened because of me blah 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 I've got to be good I've got to be good and he kind of gets whiny at points not really in the book in the show but in this book in all the stuff in Zara books, they are, it, he does whine a lot, and that really is quite irritating at times. Um, I mean, it's fairly well written. It has um, quote marks instead of speech marks, which a lot of books do, and that annoys the hell out of me. Um, it does in the other Ghostwriter books as well, which is what makes me think that it's... Um, what makes me think that it's the same Ghostwriter. Um, I don't think they're bad by any means, but they're not, I mean, they're never going to be as good as L.J. Smith because she has a phenomenal style of writing. This show is very good, but completely different and has good plots. This, you know, it's definitely readable. It's obviously entertaining because I'm on the fourth one and I'm still reading them. Um, but I feel more like I should. I'm hoping they do Damon's Diaries because this another one after this which is book five and I'm pretty sure that's the last one um so I'm hoping they'll bring out Damon's diaries now because I'd much prefer to read from Damon's point of view um and I think that would make things a lot better but they do need to stop being quite so predictable I mean it might just me be me because I'm normally quite good at predicting things but I do hate it when you I don't mind if you can predict little things and then there's more twists that you don't even think is going to happen but this I you know I had pegged 
Um, I should really talk about the content of this. Um, it begins 20 years after the second... The second, um... No, the third Vampire Diaries book. The third Stephanie's Diary book. Um, I can't remember what it was called. And it's now 1888. They returned in 1864, so, you know, he'd be a middle-aged man now if, and have a family of his own if he was a human. As we were reminded at every single thing, I'm not a human. I don't have a family. I should be this old. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and for those of you who know your history, 1888 is the year of the Jack the Ripper murders. Hence why it's called the Ripper. See, I, when it said Ripper, I thought that it meant it was Ripper Stefan. Where he goes all Ripper and I like Ripper Stefan a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Mostly because it means that there's no Delaner and more Delana, but also because I really like that character. I feel like that's showing who he actually is. And Paul Wesley agrees with that show, so that's always good. He said he doesn't like playing him as good because that's not who Stefan is deep down. Um, he's, he felt like he was always pretending in the other seasons and this season he could just let go. Um, so I got excited at the title of the book and then I realised it meant Jack the Ripper murders. And a while ago when I was studying Jack the Ripper in school I was thinking how cool would it be if I wrote a fan fiction where like Stefan was, um, I mean his Ripper days were 1920s really with Klaus, but how cool would it have been if Stefan was a Ripper back then and was Jack the Ripper? And what do you know? We have this. But he's not Jack the Ripper. I'll read you the back. Twenty years have passed since Stefan last saw his brother Damon, now living far away from the haunting memories of Mystic Falls. Stefan's finally able to start over, but when news from London reaches Stefan of a brutal, brutal killer on the use, loose, I can't speak today, Elias Jack the Ripper, Stefan suspects that the murders are the work of a vampire, his brother. See, I knew straight away that Damon wouldn't be the Ripper. Like, that'd be too obvious, and Jack, he wouldn't, why would he do it? I mean, I've always, I love history. I love Jack the Ripper. We did a lot about it in school. We went and actually got to go on a Ripper walk in London through the streets of Jack, Ra Jack Rapper. <laughs> White and Chapel. Um, so it's been a long day. Um, and that was really cool. We went to London Dungeons too and <laughs> that was quite fun but we learned a lot from that and I, the walk, walk in the streets of White Chapel really helped because I learned a lot and I could see where everybody had been, where they'd walked. So when I was reading this, it was a lot easier to picture it in my mind. I mean, we saw Ten Bells, the pub that they all hung out in. And it, so I could actually imagine it, him walking, you know, them walking the streets and blah, blah, blah. Um, Stefan is at the, at the beginning of the story on a farm working. He with a family who adore him and adopt him as a son, really, and he works there, and he's Stefan Pine, which he called himself Stefan Pine because he's never changing like a pine tree. Um, it's ridiculous to me. Um, and he's sort of happy-ish. The memories of Catherine's daughter to haunt him, which I like that because he's always said in the show... Our love for Catherine was never real. She compelled us. And Damon said, direct quote, it was Steph uh, Catherine never compelled me. It was real for me. And if Catherine compelled him and he's now turned and can't be compelled other than by an original, why is... Um, what? Why is he still thinking of Catherine? I mean, that just gives me a lot of Stefan feels. Um, it really, yeah, I like that. Because I really like Stefan. I want Stefan and Catherine. Not as much as I want Damon and Lena and Caroline and Klaus. Klaus? Yeah, Caroline and Klaus. Sorry. Um, but I do like that. And I like that he's still thinking of that a lot. Um, yeah, it, make, it, makes, it makes me happy. <laughs> I do like that aspect and I like the aspect that we get to know all the information filled in. However, sometimes I feel it's a little bit inaccurate compared to the show. Like, if Stefan... They, there's mentions of Klaus. If Stefan knew of Klaus, and Damon knew of Klaus, back then, which they did, why were they so surprised when they found out about all this Klaus stuff? And then, 
In the 1920s, Klaus was best friends with Stefan. I know he was compelled to forget that, and that's why he didn't know he was friends with Klaus. But if he was friends with Klaus in the 1920s, why would he be friends with someone that he knew was an original? And they also refer to the originals as coming straight from hell. Well, we know the origin of the originals. And it's not from hell. So that annoyed me as well. Everyone says they're from hell. And Stefan, of course, automatically assumed because of that letter, the famous Jack the Ripper letter that was sent to the journalist, was signed from hell. Well, signed Jack the Ripper, and the return address was from hell. And I think that's why they put the from hell bit in, so it would fit in, but it's still a little bit annoying. I mean, if you're a fan, if you've not read the actual books, that the show was based off, don't worry, because it's not related. But I would still highly recommend them. One of my favourite book series ever. But if you've watched the show and are considering reading these, I mean, you can do. They are good. I, w- I would recommend doing it. It is interesting if you're a big fan, but don't expect the world. Especially if you've read LJ Smith's work, don't expect it to be anything like that. If you've read LJ Smith's work and then the Ghostwriter stuff, imagine it to be like the Ghostwriter stuff a little bit better so yeah but it is still readable obviously because I'm, st- I'm still reading it I will try and get the fifth one at some point from the library um I think the fifth one what's the fifth one called it says in the back here somewhere um the asylum um so I'll try and get that I believe that's the last one correct me if I'm wrong um, yeah, I, th- I think that is the last book. And like I said, I'm really hoping Game of Diaries happens, because that would be so cool. That would be really awesome. I mean, it could lead on from Stefan's diaries, it, so it could lead up to just before he meets Elena. Like when he finds out about Catherine and everything. Or it could be in the time, like at the same time as this, because obviously Stefan and Damon split off. So we see it from Damon's point of view when he's off doing whatever he's doing when Stefan is being Stefan <laughs> brooding so yeah I would really like to see that and I hope this was helpful for you um, as usual thank you for watching blah 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 please subscribe if you like it um, also if you've got a review of this book or any of the other Stefan diapers or anything you want me to watch it, I will, because I like doing that. So, yeah. And I'm now on Fifty Shades of Grey, book two. So, not Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker. Which review will be coming up? I've got a review of Fifty Shades of Grey coming up at the same time as this one. So, that will be my next book review, I expect. So, thank you for watching.